fisher attacking a porcupine must be one of the most incredible predator-prey interactions ever. Yet, amazingly, I don't think anyone's actually seen it in the wild. At least, they certainly never filmed it before. A lot of what we know about this predator-prey interaction comes from the snow tracking work of Dr. Roger Powell, the man who literally wrote the book on the fisher. I've tried twice now to film a fisher attacking a porcupine by setting camera traps out along their trails, but I failed both times. This year, I decided to visit Roger at his place in Minnesota to show him what footage I got, learn more about these two cool species, and see if he thinks I should give up or continue my quest. I was able to, to track fishers two porcupine kills, oh, about six or eight times. Oh, well. And okay. it, it, was, it was just absolutely fascinating. It was so clear that this is a place where something really big had happened. And the fisher had to keep the porcupine from going into the den tree because that was safe. Porcupine goes into a den tree that's a hole at the base of the yeah. tree. Porcupine is in there with its back and quills facing out. Yeah. Fisher can't do anything. Yeah. In the wintertime, porcupines spend most of the day in their dens where they're safe. Mom's in there and babies complaining to get in. <laughs> Might be. You know, the, the youngsters stay with the mother for a long time. He's checking it out. Yeah. But nobody but home. Nobody home, and even if there was, they wouldn't be able to do anything. Couldn't do anything. Yeah. No. But he's uh, the fisher is is clearly keeping track yeah. and whether it's act actively being used by porcupines or not. So it just updated its cognitive map. That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then they would they would follow trails that go from the den to the feeding tree and then go up the feeding tree. And once they're up the tree they go out on horizontal branches. So if a fisher climbs the tree and goes out, there's a porcupine facing out with, again, its back. Right, so it's facing, safe. So it's safe, yeah. yeah. So the fisher has to get it on the ground yeah. between the feeding tree and the den tree. So that's exactly where I ran these cameras. Yes. All these cameras, just about 100 cameras on the snowy trail between the den tree and the feeding tree. Yeah, and, and that's the only place it's gonna happen. I get the feeling they don't really like the deep snow though. They don't. They don't. And they make trails to their feeding trees in the winter times. But that must make them more vulnerable, right? I mean, if they get caught out in that. Yeah, they're more vulnerable, yeah. Well, that's important maneuver for them to keep, keep the tail faced towards a fisher. Right. So if a fisher was coming in, they would be able to basically, they have to protect their head. Yeah. And if they can't get into a hole, then spinning is the way you protect your head. Yeah. You, you keep the tail face towards the fisher. And if the fisher changes direction or starts to jump in towards you, you gotta be able to spin fast. Right, right. Yeah. Can you imagine like, that's not yeah. a thing a lot of animals have to do, <laughs> right? No. To have the muscles and the coordination to spin. To spin, yeah. That's not a normal mammal thing. This is really see. interesting to watch because they're, they're practicing their anti-fisher maneuvers. Right, right, yeah. right. So a lot of these were like this, hitting, it seems like they're hitting the spots at speed mm -hmm. and just kind of flying through. Well, they got to catch them on the ground, right? Yeah, they so got to catch them on the ground. They're running through and if they see a porcupine there and it runs away, then they, you know, they see the motion, then they go after it. But they, they don't spend a lot of time, like got, some clips really spend some time. But a lot of this, as you can see, it's just like a fly through, mm -hmm. fly by. They're not like sniffing around a whole lot. It's like they seem to be able to determine pretty quickly if there's a porcupine yeah. on the ground or not. Day and night. They are so cool. <laughs> I'm not the least bit biased. I know. We're both we're both very pro fisher. Yeah. Where there was some soft snow outside, it was clear that a fisher had sort of crouched there and I could see the swishes in the snow of the fisher wagging its tail. <laughs> I mean it was it was really excited. Well and uh, and then it, it ran and pounced on the porcupine. Uh, it did kill the porcupine, yeah. But it um well it would have killed it by getting it away from anywhere where it could protect its face because that's the only thing that doesn't have quills right and and then be able to, to bite the face enough times to debilitate it then it would turn over right. and, and ultimately kill it uh, if it hadn't already but uh, boy there's it's just so exciting to, to, to see these yeah. places and I love, there's nothing like getting on a fisher track and following yeah, the snow and, following and just seeing this, what you find. Oh, it's so Like you great. see like a little dead bird or, you know, somewhere where it killed a mouse, but to see like a porcupine kill, that would be like the ultimate it, it, discovery. It, it, oh God, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> a fisher's killing a porcupine is hard work and it doesn't happen real often. Right. So I, I, 
I followed 150 miles of tracks in, in the three years I was out there, and I only found like six or eight yeah. porcupine kills. When I was working, I could track them, but I couldn't see them. And, right. and of course, you, you've got video, remote video, which we didn't have back then. We didn't even have video. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine that they can't be killing porcupines all right. there. So you think I should go back and set more cameras? I think you should go all back right. and set, all set right. more cameras. That would be so exciting. We left them out from, what was it, January to March. Boy, you'd think you <laughs> I know! <laughs> you'd think you'd have gotten one. All right, well, Roger, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts on this footage, and um, you've encouraged me to get out and try, try again. I think that, yeah, this has been fun. Great. Right? Yeah. Thanks for watching this episode of Wild Animals. After visiting Roger, I'm excited to try again, so be sure to subscribe and see if I can get Fisher versus Porcupine this year. It's gonna be wild.